Piera should be getting credit for fighting Roundtree, and I feel as though the opposite is happening. I'm not sure where this is coming from. Now, Piera has spread himself around the media for potential matchups. But again, that's something he should get credit for. And I feel as though it's going the opposite direction. By example, Piera should be fighting Uncle Liath. Piera will be fighting Uncle Liath. They're in a tournament right now. It is going to be Piera versus Roundtree. Uncle Liath versus Raychick. Dana, has, Dana doesn't like the word tournament. That's a word that I like. Maybe because I understand them. I know that you guys understand a straight line bracket. A wrestling background that I've had. But Dana has already made it clear that the winner of those two fights fights each other. So, it's going to be Pierre versus Uncle I, but many people want to see that right now. And they're not wrong. It is what the rankings say. If we're going to do rankings and show an integrity to the rankings, it's not wrong for someone to say, you're the champion, here's number one. Now, the, the, the bigger reason where this idea is coming from is that historically speaking, Uncle Liev has the skills to be a awful matchup for Pierre. That's historically speaking. Like, like no rules really seem to be applying to Pierre's career. But Pierre is, is kind of re starting to rewrite history and whose skill set is more superior. But I, I would still understand the nostalgia to the mindset. I don't think it's something that Piera would disagree with. I know it's not something that Piera's mentor, Glover Teixeira, would disagree with. So when that match didn't get made, there was a bit of an idea that that was on Piera. Now, the real answer simply lies with whoever made the phone call and offered the matches, right? That, that's where the real, and, and we can just stop right there, but, but let's not stop there because I'm speaking about perception. I'm not speaking about reality. So the perception then, as soon as this happened, and I'm talking about Piera against Roundtree, the perception was a bit of a letdown because when Uncle Liev got booked up, Piero was in the process of calling out Aspinall. So it looked as though there was a little wind blowing in that direction. So then when it landed on 205 pounds, it didn't land in some super matchup or a super fight. There was a bit of a pushback on Piero. Now, I'm not proclaiming for you that Uncle Liev did anything wrong. I believe that Uncle Liev has done everything right. I believe that Uncle Liev deserves certain things, that he is getting credit and the rankings support that. His placement on cards support that. What is next for him and the fact that he's the number one contendership supports that. But there's nothing wrong with him being a little bit greedy and a little bit impatient and saying, I want it and I want it now. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we're to look at this objectively and we must assign fault, like Law 101, I don't like this. I think there's room for, hey, let's just walk away. Hey, let's call it good. Hey, it's even. I think there's room for that. I did this, you did that, misunderstanding. Let's call it, hey, walk away. But the law does not agree with me. All situations and all scenarios under law has somebody at fault. You must find one of the two people at fault. And if we were to conduct this in a court of law, that person would be Uncle Liab. Why? Well, because Uncle Liev accepted a fight with Rachik first. It would matter who went first. If there was nobody else left for Uncle Liev, like, by example, Khalil and Alex gets made. Alex and Piera gets made. Or Al Alex and Aspinall gets made, for that matter. If, 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 if the guy in front of Uncle Liev, and there's only one guy, wasn't available, it's a very different scenario. and. Uncle Live would be forced to fight somebody else. Rachik's name comes to mind, but what I'm sharing for you is that same forcement was then put on Alex. The number one contender, the guy that Alex called out, the guy who called Alex out, the guy who 
Alex accepted the call out of. Uncle Lime was busy first. Like if you, if you were trying trying to stand on principle of this matter, it matters who came off the board first. If Piero was to go to Roundtree for some unknown reason, had some backstory that the rest of us didn't know about, and that does happen. Adesanya did that with Yoel Romero, just for example. There's something between these guys that we don't know about. It gets brought to life, and this is the match I'm going to do, and everybody else is going to have to wait. And then you got to place Uncle Live and he comes. But that's, that's not what happened. That's what happened to Alex. The guy Alex wanted to fight went and took a fight with somebody else. Alex now can't get the fight that he's agreed to, that he said publicly that he wants, that nobody has disputed, even through rumor, that Alex ever turned down or sidestepped. That guy went and did something else. So Alex can continue to try to get Espinal. He can continue to talk about guys like Duplessis if he would like to. When his phone rings, he either says yes to the idea or he doesn't, whatever idea that is. And he said yes. And it is a disaster of a matchup for Alex. That's a conversation for another day. Roundtree's not only going to win this, Roundtree's going to easily win this. But that's a conversation for another day. And there's also an if. There's two things that Roundtree has to do. I'm suggesting for you as a great competitor, and I've seen him many times, if he does those things, and I think he will, he will win this fight very easily. But many guys lock up in the back before they ever get to Pierre. They're starting to shut down. They're starting to wilt. And you're going to see more of that, not less of that. If that affects Roundtree, okay, great. Then every, everything I'm saying is out. But, but, but again, that's a conversation for another day. I want to just speak to whatever perception you have that Alex tried to get a different fight. You're actually wrong. When Alex accepted Uncle Liev, Alex kept his name out there and Alex stayed busy. And there was something with Uncle Liev. I don't want to stick this on, but, but, but I am close. There was something with Uncle Liev that pertained to religious beliefs, Ramadan, for example. So like think UFC 300, there was something there. And I, th I, think, I'm, I think I got it completely, but I'm, I'm close enough while remaining sensitive that precluded Uncle Aya versus Alex at 300. So now Alex has to go with somebody else. Just for example. And then was it 302 where Alex saved the day again and did a rematch against Prohaska that he definitely did not want to do? But it was one of those things. When the phone rings, that's where it comes. Right there. That's your, that's your decision. Bravery might be something that you've got in comparison to other people. Courage is a choice. If you want to be courageous, there is a choice. But in this sport, there's also a litmus test. That's when that phone rings. You do whatever you want in the media. You do whatever you can to negotiate. You do whatever you can to steer your career, get the biggest paycheck against the easiest opponent, and keep that belt around your waist for as long as you can. But the gig is up when that phone rings. And you either say yes or no. And there is a, a, a misunderstanding that Alex Pierre went for this fight, or that he dodged, or that he maneuvered. He did not. There's a misunderstanding by Pierre trying to go up to heavyweight, or even later in the game and more recently, trying to go down to middleweight. There is a misunderstanding that he's doing those things to, to not give an opportunity to Uncle Live or to avoid Uncle Live. That, that is a misunderstanding in the message. Alex is just making it very well known that while some guys say, I'll fight anybody at any time, very few guys do it, and he is one of the guys that will do it. And you do get a lot of respect and appreciation when you're going after guys and calling guys, and you're going in one way, which is guys that are perceived to be in front of you. And it's a, it's a very different perception when you go after guys that are perceived to be underneath you. But when you give a guy perceived to be underneath you an opportunity, and what's the difference there, guys? Timeline. If Alex went after Roundtree, I'm not having this conversation. That is not what happened. That decision was made. Roundtree went after him. Roundtree did enough. Roundtree got the call. Alex got the same call. And, and now's the time where you show your courage. And believe it or not, as much as you believe where you, you get this guy, and he, gosh, he's only going after bigger guys and tougher guys and better guys and more experienced guys. Wow, what a stud. I don't disagree with you. I'm just sharing. 
there's another side to that courage, which is some guys perform their best when nothing is expected of them. When they come in and they got a nice soft bed to fall in, should it not go well? Because people said that it wasn't going to go well in the first place. It's very different when people tell you, this is going to be easy. This is going to be great. This guy is lesser than you. Should you win? By the way, we're not even going to tell you congrats. That's the life that John Jones has to live, by the way. It's very, it's very tough in sport. Everybody has that little kid in them that just wants to be patted on the back and told good job. Even if those checks come and the endorsement come and the fame come, that isn't what they were after. They're after that, congratulations, good job. And when that opportunity gets removed, right, Alex is going, he's trying to go up to heavyweight, he's trying to go down a weight, trying to find Uncle Life, he's trying to do all these different things, and now he's got a guy that isn't in the top five. This is only the second time in a meaningful amount of time we have gone out of the top five for a title contender, the other one being Sean Strickland when he took on Izzy. I'm, I'm just sharing for you, this wasn't somebody on the radar. And it's not somebody that's going to get the balance. It's not a win that is then going to draw Pierre into his great dream of going up and taking on Aspinall. It's none of those things. So the courage is very different. And when Pierre got tested with that, he passed the test. Because he simply said, yes.